Hi everyone, it's Julie Shane with Yogineology.com. Today we're going to go over the huge pose, Ikapara Raja Kapotasana. Um, you want to make sure before you get started that you're really warmed up. So a few rounds of Surya Namaskar A, a few rounds of Surya Namaskar B. If you have tight shoulders, um, it'll be really important that you open those up. So maybe a few rounds with the strap back and forth, tight hips. You'll want to spend some time in some big hip openers um, before you get into any of this that we're going to be doing today. So like any yoga pose that you're working up towards, you want to make sure you don't push yourself or force yourself into anything. It should all feel pretty natural and comfortable. And if you're in a prep step for a few weeks, a few months, a few years, that's totally cool. So just take your time with it and just see how it goes. So to start for this big back bend and big hip opener, um, you're going to want to come into down dog. We'll do a few rounds of some pigeon prep. So up against the wall I find is useful just to get into the shoulders a little more. So you can put your heels up against the wall, stretch back into kind of a shorter version of your down dog than usual, and really focus on opening the shoulders here. And then you'll take your right knee, bring it between the hands, coming into a pigeon prep. So you're gonna slide your left leg back, let the hips sink nice and low, and then begin to walk the hands back under the shoulders. So you wanna get into some of the back bending motions that you're going to use later on. So walk the hands under the shoulders, shoulder heads roll back, chest is li lifting up so you're going to feel it first and foremost in your low back but you want to add the upper back so any back bend you want to think of as an up bend so you've got to get up before you can go back so lengthen the spine and then start to drop back a bit right and this is where the pose pigeon gets its name it's like you're puffing your chest here once you feel like this hip flexor on the left leg has started to open and you kind of got the motion going up and back in the back bend, you're going to take your right knee, move it over to the side. You want to keep the knee joint closed. So we're not trying to bring the shin parallel with the front of the mat or anything like that. You're just going to bring it to the side, slowly walk yourself forward, just down onto the forearms, and then bring yourself over to the left. You might stay right here. You might be able to relax the belly and the ribs down towards the floor. And then eventually the head. And you can stay there for as long as you need to. You want to be able to relax into that pose. So for some people, you'll find relaxation after a few breaths. For some people, it might take a few minutes. So just kind of feel it out and stay there for as long as you need. When you feel like you've opened things on that side, hands back to the center, back to down dog, open the shoulders, repeat it on the other side. Left knee coming forward, slide the right hip back. And if you feel like this left hip is really up far off the floor, you could grab a block or roll up a blanket and bring it under you if you needed to. So once again, hands walk back under the shoulders. This back bend action is super important. So lift the heart up, sink the hips down, shoulder heads back. You can even bring your tongue to the roof of the mouth, which actually helps with back bends too. So tongue to the top of the palate. Lift up, lift up. Sink the hips down. Come back out. Left knee's gonna come to the left. Keep the knee joint closed. We're just getting into a different area of the hip. Lower down to the forearms, then walk yourself over to the right. So you're letting your belly or your hips rest on top of that right or the left foot. You'll lower down. You might stay right here. You might relax all the way down. And again, you'll stay there for as long as you need to. Hands back. Come back into downward facing dog. Stretch the shoulders and then lower to the knees. So now we're gonna move up against the wall using the help of our blocks and our straps to get us even closer to our peak pose, Ikapada Raja Kapotasana. So you want to have both blocks and your strap handy. If you don't have yoga blocks or a strap at home, soup cans, books could work for blocks. 
dog leash scarf sweatshirt could kind of hold the place of the strap. So you're gonna take your left knee, bring it back to the wall so your shin is right on the wall, and you're gonna slide the knee down until it touches the floor. You're going to then scoot the right leg forward and find yourself in that pigeon kind of position again. But you're keeping, as you can see, you're keeping the knee joint closed. Trying to bring the hips as low as possible and square them as much as you can. So left hip is moving forward, right hip pulling back. You're gonna grab your blocks now, bring them under the shoulders, and this is to help you get lift. So you're gonna press into the blocks, lift up, lift with your heart, tongue to the top of the mouth, Start to bring the shoulder blades down and work on this position here. So now you're adding this thigh stretch in the back leg and getting a little deeper back bend. From here, you're going to grab your strap or whatever you're using. You're going to bring it over the top of the foot. Once you catch it, you're gonna sling it over your shoulder. Your other hand can stay on the block for support, and you're gonna work on pulling that foot towards you as much as you can. So at first you start just slinging it over the shoulder, and then eventually elbow comes up, and you start to get into more of that ikapata shape. Right, you might stay there for a really long time, months, <laughs> at least spend a couple minutes kind of in that position, and then you'll switch sides. So come down. You might take a child's pose in between just to kind of regroup and go to the other side. So right knee to the wall, slide it down, scoop the left leg forward so the hips lower into that pigeon type of position. Let the hips sink, turn the right hip forward slightly, left hip back, and then walk the blocks back under you, press, and try to get that lift. So you're lengthening the spine, lifting the heart, and starting to drop the head back. Once you've found some comfort there, grab your strap, hook the top of the foot, sling it over your shoulder, and work on stretching the thigh, which can be a take a long time. It can be a time consuming process to get the thigh open enough to be able to bring the foot close enough towards you. So that's a lot of prep for this pose. The next kind of in-between step would be mermaid pose, which is kind of halfway in between both of these. So you can come into pigeon on either side, whichever one you want to start with. Pigeon prep. Let the hips sink down. You're gonna bend the back knee, bring that foot towards you, walk the hands under the shoulders, everything we just did, only we're not using the props now. You're gonna reach back with the left hand if your left foot is back, and you're gonna start to pull the foot towards you. So deepening that thigh stretch. Can you square the hips a little more, bring the left shoulder forward, and then eventually you're gonna slide the foot into the crook of the elbow. This hand comes towards your chest, Again, square the hips, sink the hips down low, and then see if you can bring the other hand behind you, right? And find your mermaid pose here. And that's kind of an in-between, pretty intense big pose, not quite as big as our Ikapada Raja Kapotasana. So for that pose, I'll switch sides. For that pose, the biggest thing now that we need to add is the huge shoulder rotation and the correct grip on the foot. So once again, hands are walking back, hips sinking low, bend the knee, draw the sole of the foot towards you. What you're going to do is take the hand back and you're going to reach from the outside of the foot underneath the top of the foot, right? So you're reaching under and then grabbing the inside of the foot. That's really important. If you don't get that grip right, you're not going to be, be able to rotate the elbow the correct way. So again, underneath the top of the foot, grab onto the inside of the foot. From here, again, square the hips, start to bend the elbow, and pull the foot towards you. That might be as far as you go. If the shoulder's open enough and you're able to get the leg close enough to you, this elbow starts to go up, you square the hips, draw the head, 
towards the back of the front. Release. Take some grounding poses after that big pose. So some forward folds, twists on your back. Remember that everything we do in yoga is a huge journey, so don't feel like you have to rush into anything like that. It does take a lot of dedication for a lot of us to be able to eventually get into that pose. If you're lucky and blessed enough to be able to just float right into it, just enjoy the big opening. But definitely take some time to rest and to kind of regroup everything um, before leaving your mat. If you have any questions or want to see any other videos, let me know. I hope you guys are having a great day. Namaste.